Now that is the Honda Zero SUV prototype, and I'm gonna tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm Jordan, and you're watching Auto Express. Yes, that's right, I said prototype, because while you might think that you recognize this concept car from the CES technology show in Las Vegas this year, Honda have changed their tune and are now calling it a prototype, and that is really exciting. So what are we looking at here? Well, this is a all electric, brand new, next generation, incredible reboot of an EV SUV that's designed to rival cars, kind of like the Tesla Model Y Kia EV6 or the Hyundai Ioniq 5, that sort of thing. And the first thing that strikes you is it really is a very curious looking thing, isn't it? So if we start at the front, you can see that the design is really classic and it doesn't have any of those sort of wild shapes or sort of that complexity that we're sort of used to from Honda back in the day. Instead, you've got this black panel here with a sort of quite trendy set of uh, daytime running lights above, a glowing logo, and that H logo, which is bespoke to the Zero Series, is going to be reaching production. And if you can't really see underneath there, there is actually some facility for some actual headlights. So that is a very good sign. But if you actually look at the surfacing, you can kind of see how it's sort of tucked in by the bumper. That is all very new and all very interesting. The wheel size on this car, obviously it's a concept, so they're 21 inches, which means that we might or might not get wheels that big for production. But the really impressive part is the back. I mean, look at it. It's a bit van-like if you sort of first see it, but what's really important to sort of understand is the context of this car, because it's not actually that big. Now I'm fairly short and it's actually underneath my eye line. I can see over the roof. And it means that it looks a lot less van-like and a lot more dynamic than you might expect. Continually looking around the back, we've got here this sort of U-shaped LED light at the rear. Now, obviously expect some indicators and brake lights and all of that to be integrated eventually, as well as another massive undercut that you can see there. How cool is that? Let's have a look inside because there's a load more to talk about. All right, so stepping inside the Honda Zero SUV concept and it looks very well concept car-like, doesn't it? So if we sort of slip behind the wheel, we can see a vast expanse of screen right now. So we haven't been given any specific details, but I'm gonna tell you what I can see in front of me. And that is, we've got a couple of digital mirrors at either end, which is uh, still quite a contentious thing to have to sort of deal with on a day to day. But remember, Honda were one of the first in the market with that type of system in the Honda E. And you do kind of get used to it. There's also a screen in front of the driver and a nice big chunky unit here in the center console. What is important beyond the size of the screens, however, is that it's gonna use an all new and apparently very clever user interface called Asimo. Now, remember Asimo? That was that robot that they made uh, about 20 years ago. And now it's formed itself into an intelligent user interface. And I think that is a really clever thing to do. But actually, if we zoom out for a second and just take stock of what else is going on in here, you realize it's really, really funky. So they've done things like pulled the header rail here on the windscreen right the way back. So you've got an incredible view forward, loads and loads of glass with a digital rear view mirror here, but inherently that might be the same case of production or it might be an actual rear view mirror because if we sort of crane behind us, you can see there is a very small window right at the back. The other thing is, is that the glass is also on the roof and it makes the whole cabin for what is a car that is meant to be about the size of uh, sort of a Tesla Model Y and that sort of thing feel really very spacious. It's also got plenty of width as well. I feel not at all constrained and the seats of this concept car anyway are super comfortable. From behind the wheel, you can notice that this concept car has a yoke. So we've been told that Honda are working actively on steer by wire, which would allow this type of steering yoke to happen uh, to be installed instead of a traditional steering wheel. I'm all for a yoke if it is connected with steer by wire, it just works. However, if it's on, on a normal steering system, it doesn't because you kind of need to crane all the way around. But it's interesting to know that they are working on it. Generally speaking from the inside, yes, I know this is a concept, but this feels very, very fresh and it's gonna be very interesting to see what actually comes into production. Okay, popping into the rear now, a reminder, this is somewhere between a C and a D segment SUV. And of course it's still a concept, but legroom does seem to be very impressive with only the smallest of humps in the floor. And also you can tuck your feet if you can see right under the driver's seat. So that's also quite a nice feeling. So despite the fact that this car has that sort of big slab of metal on the back, you can see because of the glass roof and because of these cute little quarter windows here as well, it's still very airy, very light, very spacious. I also love this type of armrest that's integrated into the rear seat bench. It's all very clever. Did you know that you can actually buy and sell your car at autoexpress.co.uk? So if that's something that you wanna do, make sure you click the link in the description below and we'll run you through the process. Okay, looking inside the boot, if somebody asks you why 
the car looks like it does with those big slab of metal on either side, it's for this very reason, because Honda has been pretty clear about the fact that it wants to make this car as usable and as practical as possible. And it does. Instead of essentially the boot space being relegated to what would fit underneath a parcel shelf, effectively, it's got this sort of van-like sort of open space here which I know it's kind of normal but is really usable and that's the whole point of this car it's an SUV it is not a sports car it's designed first and foremost to be usable and overall it kind of gives you the impression that this is something built for utility and practicality rather than just style and of course if you're wanting something sleeker that does exist in the form of the saloon and we'll get back to that in a little bit okay just a quick note about the tech specs because while Honda hasn't given any specifics as yet they have told us a little bit more about how this car is going to be constructed and what advantages this new platform is going to have so fundamentally we have a skateboard style chassis which is going to be shared between this and the saloon although there will be a couple of little changes the electric motors are bespoke for Honda and they are are available either as a single motor with a rear wheel drive chassis or a dual motor with an all wheel drive chassis and Honda has gone to quite long lengths to reveal that it's saving quite a lot of space with this new generation of electric motor that is designed specifically for this generation of EV. Okay so with all of its cool technology there's also a few other bits that Honda's working on in the background which could actually make this a really funky thing. The first of which is face recognition and a bunch of cameras around the car that recognize where you are and what you might be doing with it. So for an example if you get in it will recognize who you are and change the car's settings to suit. That sort of thing is being done before but a really clever one is that Honda thinks that it's going to be able to recognize when you're using shopping bags or when you've got a pram with you and unlock the correct door and even maybe pop the boot if it knows that you're heading towards the tailgate without having to sort of wave your foot underneath in one of those active sort of systems that you used to have to back in the day. That sort of clever thinking might be what sets this Honda apart when it comes to those sort of intellectual features that are sort of beyond the normal EV sphere. The other thing that this car is going to introduce as well is Honda's first version of a software defined vehicle. Now, what a software defined vehicle is, rather than there being a million computers all talking amongst one another, there is one central brain that controls everything. This really does feel like the next generation. It's really impressive to see that Japan isn't just kind of resting on its laurels when it comes to its EVs, but it's really thinking about how we can make it better and not rushing things to market. The good news is with this one is that we shouldn't have to wait long. Okay, I really don't mean to sound evangelical about this car, but it really does feel like a totally new generation, both for Honda and really for the EV as well. Okay, we can overlook some of its past transgressions with some of the EVs that it has for sale now and some of the ones that didn't quite have the right battery or the right specs to really go up against most competition. But that thing, honestly, looks so cool. And if it really is 90% of the way to production, then what we're gonna see in the next couple of years is gonna be really, really exciting. I honestly can't wait to see them on the road.